Hey friends and fam, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Tonight I'm gonna knock out two quick videos. I'm gonna break them into two videos, I'll tell why in a sec, uh, about knives, EDC folder knives, specifically made in the US, specifically with blade lengths under 3.5 inches. That's an important thing to note because in a lot of states, uh, three point, you, you can't conceal carry a knife that's more than 3.5 inches. Some are three inches and knife rules vary a lot from state to state, but 3.5 I've found is kind of the magic number in a lot of places, Colorado being one of them. So all of these knives are under 3.5 inches. All of these knives are made in the US as well. So this isn't a video on defensive knives, though if you're interested in my take on defensive knives, what I look for in a knife, that kind of stuff. I'm not a knife expert by any means, but I've done a lot of research. I've put a lot of thought into how I specifically, and probably most people would use a defensive knife. I have no, I don't think I'm gonna go crazy knife fighter on anybody. I, I, I approach defensive knives in a very practical, very realistic manner. I never wanna use it, but as a last resort, I might. This video isn't about defensive knives, but again, if you want to see a video on defensive knives, feel free to comment below, let me know. So EDC knives, uh, if you know me, if you follow me, if you've watched my EDC videos or anything in the past, you know that I carry a Leatherman Skeletool primarily. I use the pliers a lot, the screwdrivers a lot. It just, it works for me for reasons. I've made a whole video on the Leatherman Skeletool. If you're into that, you can check it out on my channel. But what makes for another good EDC knife? I have dozens and dozens and dozens, and these are the main ones that I'll carry when I wanna carry a knife instead of my Skeletool, or I wanna carry a knife in addition to my Skeletool, or I just have them kind of around playing with them. Because there's, there's things for me and for most people that kind of go into what a good EDC knife is. What feels good in the hand, what fits well in the pocket, what's good for opening boxes, that kind of stuff. Real practical uses, or just entertainment uses, so a knife that's fun to open and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna act like I don't carry around knives that are fun to open because, let's be serious, a knife that's fun to open will be more fun to open than a knife that's not fun to open. So having said that, Let's get into some of my choices. This first video that I'm uploading right now that you're watching is gonna be my favorite couple of knives that are under 50 bucks made in the US. I'm gonna make a separate video of the higher end knives, though, you know, knives get really expensive, but I think most people would consider these the next video higher end knives. They, they, they're all under $200, though. So, this first video, let's get into it. So the first knife I'm gonna talk about is the Kershaw Skyline. This is a non-assisted manual opening uh, flipper style. Open it with this little flip guy here. Very small, very lightweight. I think it's around two ounces. The blade length is around 3.1 inches, I think. The steel, for those that care, I think is a 14C28N stainless. Uh, I'm not gonna get too into the specs. I'm just gonna kinda talk about the features that I like about it, why it's one of my favorites. Uh, this, I think, the standard model, this is not, this is the black wash. Edition, I think it's a little more expensive. The standard kind of satin stone wash, I believe is around 40 bucks. This one I think is a little bit more though the prices kind of fluctuate. Uh, it is a liner lock flipper. Let me try, I'm, I'm kind of in a weird position here. It opens really fast though. So you just kind of give it a little flick, opens really, really nice. Has a nice big contour here and Liner lock, like I mentioned, the thumb studs here also act as the lock on this side, so they actually go back and hit the frame here. They're not very functional as an opening device, though you could, you could kinda use it. You can, but I never do. They're pretty much unusable uh, for openers. Uh, so if you really need a thumb stud to open, this isn't really a knife for you. But G10, Handles are pretty grippy. They're not too aggressive to where they're gonna rip up your pants or anything like that, but they do provide a fair amount of good grip. And there is no jimping on the back, unfortunately. I think the only thing I would add to this knife to make it a win would be if we added some jimping right here to provide a little bit of grip for uh, kind of utility tasks and things like that. Anyways, this is the Kershaw Skyline. Uh, does come in a variety of colors, though nothing too crazy like the next knife I'm gonna talk about, which is another Kershaw knife. Uh, I bought all these knives. I have no association at all with Kershaw for those that are wondering. Uh, they just happen to make my two favorite uh, made in the US uh, low price, low cost EDC knives. So this is another pretty popular knife. I'm not sure what's more popular, the, 
the Skyline or the Leak, maybe the Leak. Uh, this one has a little bit of a different blade shape. It is an assisted opener. I think the blade length is around three inches. There's a couple, there's a bunch of different models and colors and combos of this knife. So it's gonna be hard for me to talk about all of them. But this is one I have, this is a gray one. It is an assisted opener with this little rear uh, flipper as well. It's kind of a very small, uh, has a little bit of jimping on it, but very easy to activate, very fast opener. Let me try to show this. Nice. I like it, good shape, very thin, carries very well in the pocket. This one is the metal scale version, though I do think they have a plastic one as well. Super thin in both this dimension and this dimension. This is just a pretty, it's like a satin finish, pretty smooth. If your hands get wet or bloody or whatever, this isn't gonna be your best option for grip, though for normal type use, it works very well. There is a little locking mechanism here, so you can slide this over, and now the knife cannot open. So if you're worried about it opening in your pocket, uh, you can lock it down if you need to, though I have never had this uh, knife inadvertently open in my pocket. The pocket clip is not a deep carry clip by default, but you can get aftermarket clips for this. You can reverse the clip to carry tip up or tip down. There is a little thumb stud. Uh, it's kind of hard to use, but as a flipper, since it is assisted, uh, the thumb stud is usable, unlike on the Skyline, I feel. Uh, the blade length is probably the most unique thing. This is a very elegant looking knife. Here's another one in green. Uh, this one has the serrated blade. I think of this kind of more as a gentleman's knife, not really gonna be your heavy duty, hardcore use knife, though it is very pointy <laughs> and it will pierce pretty good. The thing is, this is kind of a Warncliffe type style blade, which a lot of people say doesn't have a ton of practical EDC uses, but I beg to differ. I think the Warncliffe style blade with the very flat, um, not much belly, very flat, I don't know, blade <laughs> portion. Again, I don't do knife reviews, so I don't really know all the proper terminology that I'm supposed to use here. But this flat portion uh, means that you have a flat tip. That means this is gonna be very controllable when you're using this to cut open boxes, which in all honesty, is probably the number one use of most guys' knives. So for opening boxes, this blade comes in really, really handy, the blade shape of it. It does mean that the tip is pretty fragile, so if you're gonna be trying to use this for prying or other tasks like that, you will probably break the tip. Again, these come in a variety of colors, blade colors, configurations, but for the most part, they're all gonna have the same general shape. Granted, some will be serrated, some won't, some will be satin blades, some will be black like this, some will be stone washed and black washed. Uh, so basically, sky's the limit for what you want your life to look what you want your knife to look like chances are the leak is going to make one in a color combination that you like uh that's pretty much it again i'm not getting too detailed this isn't a big fancy knife review this is just kind of showing some knives i like why i like them and yeah just to let you know about them so yeah, these two knives I primarily like because they carry very well in the pocket. They're very slim, they're relatively lightweight. The Skyline is really lightweight. The Leak is relatively lightweight, especially depending on the model. The metal handle ones I think are a little bit heavier. Uh, and the blade lengths are just very, the blade sizes and shapes are very usable and functional for how I use them in typical EDC settings. Oh, I forgot to mention, there is a little bit of jimping here on the back of the leak as well. Uh, but I actually, typically when I'm opening boxes, grab it kind of up further like this. Anyway, yeah, these two knives definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive made in the US folder that will take up very minimal pocket space. All right, guys, thanks for watching my video about best EDC knives under 50 bucks probably uploading or have already uploaded or whatever. If you're into the a little bit more expensive knives, feel free to watch my other video. As always, if you found this video helpful, informative, or any of that kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. Get subscribed to the channel, turn on that notification bell thingy, comment down below, let me know what you wanna see. If you have knife recommendations, always any kind of recommendations, really, I always appreciate your comments down below. No rambling in this video, really, so we'll save that for later. All right, take care.